quarter of one paper on the single child ratio, and I'm going to present some of your questions. Why? So some context first. Okay, so we know that DLA signatures, it's a scheme for public uh, signature aggregation, and it's something that is quite used in Ethereum 2 because of a specific property, which is it can be aggregated. Okay, it means that you have two signatures, you aggregate them, you got a single signature. You have 1,000 signatures, you aggregate them, you got a single signature. Okay, aggregation. There's a drawback. The verification is quite slow. Okay, it's a few milliseconds, so it's a thousand times nearly slower than many verifications. So we've got this in Ethereum 2, and if I simplify a little, the way it's used in Ethereum 2, we've got validators, they sign attestations, we've got thousands of validators, they sign thousands of attestations, but when you're going to check those attestations when you're receiving a block, you won't have to check all the signatures, you won't have to actually, you will get actually all the signatures because the block proposer with someone in the middle will aggregate them and what you will have in the block is an aggregated signature and not the whole block. So it means that it's much smaller and even if one verification is slow, you're saving thousands of verifications, so you're quite happy. More details on what it means. An aggregation is both commutative and associative, which it means that you can do that in any order. Okay? That's very good for parallelization. You can have one set of signatures aggregated by someone, another set aggregated by someone else, and then you take this, you aggregate the resulting stuff, and you're, you're done. You're done except that this small point, which means <coughs> if you have in two sets the same signatures, when you aggregate, you will have something bad, which is basically twice the signature, which is a little bit complicated to verify. So if we simplify, when you aggregate either signatures, you don't want to aggregate twice the same signature. Okay? If I simplify. <coughs> and it's still so. <coughs> the fact that you can aggregate them means that, oh, there are aggregation protocols around, just use one of them, and I will be there. And there are I would not say thousands, but dozens of aggregation protocols, but none of them is Byzantine tolerant and fast. Some of them are Byzantine tolerant, some of them are fast, but not none of them is false. So if I ask what Ander is about, you can guess that it's aggregating via the signatures being fast. And we say fast, it's thousands of signatures aggregated in seconds. Byzantine tolerant, so you're going to aggregate between thousands of nodes, and some of these nodes will try to put the protocol down by any means. Okay, definition of Byzantine. They can do whatever they want. And in real life, what you will have often is <coughs> nodes that are just dead and not, and not responding. And we want something to be versatile. I mean by this that in a, in a network, uh, you will have thousands of nodes with different capacities, some of them very fast, some of them very slow, uh, and with different network capacities. Some of them will be really well interconnected. There will be some uh, wraps of nodes that are connected, while some nodes will be somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So with my latency, still you want to aggregate with all these nodes. And what does it mean for Ethereum? A possible plan to use Android in Ethereum could be this one. Uh, if we look at the specification a week ago, uh, what we had is basically uh, in a shell, we target to have a committee size of around 100, but we can have up to 4,000 nodes. So the idea here is okay, if you can aggregate quickly, you don't really care about the size of the committee. In this range, it will be basically around one second of the time. As well, in Ethereum, you have this beacon chain committee. So here it's basically everybody, and you try to aggregate for the beacon chain. And at this point, what you want to have is still safety. <coughs> a possible way to do things is let's select a subset of the nodes from the committees, 16, and let's ask them to do the aggregation for the beacon chain. And you will have at this point an aggregation between 16,000 
modes. Okay. And you want this to be fast because the plan is if we can be very fast, or one or two seconds for this whole application to happen, it means that in two blocks you've got your finality. So that's what we want to do. And we said that it doesn't exist today, we don't have such protocols, so how do we do that? So when you have such a problem, basically you're looking at complexity, you're going to look at time complexity and message complexity. And you will want more or less on this side if you can, and you don't want to be on this side of this graph. Okay? And we will see that some protocols, as JLS signatures are quite easy to aggregate, it's very easy to parallelize. <coughs> so, time complexity is easy to get. However, message complexity is much more difficult to have, and it can become totally crazy very quickly. So, the first things to look at is just a simple gossiping solution. By simple gossiping, okay, you just a fluid basic gossiping stuff. You're just sending your signature to everybody. Everybody does that, and at the end, someone aggregates. Okay, and uh, it's not that bad actually. So it's very simple the advantage of being very simple, and it's not absolutely bad. Uh, you will have this time complexity in log n, basically because it's a peer-to-peer -peer network, and you expect that you've got some interconnection. So the time complexity is good in theory. And the message complexity, if all the nodes in the network want to send one signature each and to receive all the signatures, it's going to be n squared, minimum, depending on, with a flooding protocol, it will be a little bit more, but with, the complexity will be n2, but with a constant, a little bit large, and then you get some optimization of some protocol. And add current went this way, for example, and they aggregate with 2,000 nodes, it's a fixed size, much less than what we do, and they're around 12 seconds, which is uh, an order of magnitude slower than 20 nodes. And they are quite clear that they take uh, 8 pairs, which is not a lot, especially if there are some bad nodes in this, and they clearly say, okay guys, uh, that's his future work. And um, we tried this, so, okay, we've got this issue with too many messages and so on. So what we tried at the beginning is, okay, can we continue on a gossiping network, but can we kind of compressing things, like if we can aggregate, so as a peer, if we receive a signature, if we can aggregate, uh, we will, and instead of sending our signature, we will send something aggregated, good enough. Uh, it implies that you verify at this point, because if someone sends you a bad signature and you aggregate without verification, then your own signature will be bad, and uh, that's all bad. So you, when you start to do this, you have to verify what you're doing, uh, the aggregation that you're receiving. And you really want not to overlap, because if you're sending something that is aggregated, and someone else has aggregated, and it, there's an overlap, you're dead, you can't aggregate. <coughs> okay, so you need to solve this. So, uh, what we did at this point, so okay, actually we know all the signers, there's a known list in this committee, so we can give them an ID just by using the public key that we know. We just saw this, and the position in, uh, in the OI uh, will be their ID. So we know that we've got now a set of nodes with no holes. Uh, that's perfect. So here, in this example, we've got eight nodes, ID 0, 1, and so on. And we are kind of organizing the aggregation by saying, OK, the node 0 will aggregate the signature from node 1, and that's it. So if you receive the signature from node 1, it aggregates. If not, well, they send it. Send for the two and three, four and five, and so on. And you can go then to the next level. If you have aggregated zero and one, and now you receive two and three, well, aggregate. Okay. So that's your strategy. And it's, uh, it's nice. It's nice, but uh, the problem is the more it grows, the less difficult, the less. Uh, uh, Possibilities to aggregate, basically what you will receive is something difficult to aggregate. So you start to tune things, saying, okay, we'll wait a little bit longer, and so on. So you can do things, but uh, to feel quickly that it's not going to fly very, very long. So you need to do something better. And at this point, we introduce a set of techniques. So actually, there's someone who worked on this in a non byzantine context uh, 10 years ago. And it has exactly the same logic of, okay, you, you've got this, you know all the nodes, <coughs> you know the ideas, and you think, instead of kind of hoping that 
you will get the signature from one data point. You're just organizing things, and zero is going to send its signatures to one because it, it knows that one will aggregate it. Okay, so there's a kind of first one, first level. And at this level, zero sends its signatures to one, one to zero, two to three, three to two, four to one. Okay? And then we can aggregate. So it's aggregated, and it means that at the next level, when zero and one we exchange the aggregate signature with two and three, the aggregation is always succeed because uh, it's a tree and there's no overlap by, by definition. And then you go to the next level, and so on and so on. And so, on. so basically, you've got log n levels, which is good for time complexity. If one node is down, it's OK. This level of aggregation is just zero, and then we aggregate with two and three. And that's it. That's it. And if you've got more nodes down, it's the same thing. Uh, nothing will happen at the first two levels, and it will happen later on. Uh, there's still uh, a little bit issue when I say it. It's okay, how do I know that a node is down? Do I have to wait forever? Uh, and actually, I can't know that a node is down by definition in the distributed system. I can see that I won't receive anything or that it does not reply, but I don't know actually. And it's worse because it's a Byzantine context, so it can pretend to be there, but not really be there. It can send half of a signature, a third of a signature, whatever. Okay? So the way we do that, First, we push the information. We're not querying someone to send us something. We just say, okay, here is our signature, aggregated, and here is it. <coughs> and second, everything happens in parallel. So we're not waiting uh, for an answer from node one, or we're not waiting for a signature from node one to, go to start the other level. So zero, at the beginning, is going to communicate with node one, but as well with the node two and three. Of course, at this point, it doesn't have a signature from one, and in this case, it never happens. But it's OK, it starts. So zero will say, OK, hey, you can aggregate my signature. So at this point, maybe two will have zero to three. And if we look at the other, to do the same thing, they will start immediately. And then they will have updates, potentially, that will give them the full data. So you can represent it like this, communication all over the place in parallel, whatever the level. So it's organized, but you communicate with everybody without waiting. Which is obviously an issue if you have thousands of nodes, uh, because you're, what I'm saying is, oh, let's communicate with everybody, uh, right? But if I don't want to kill the network, I have to organize things a little. And the way it works, we basically have a dissemination period, which is 20 milliseconds. And every 20 milliseconds, <coughs> we contact a new set of nodes. And we progress in the levels. So for each level, we contact a new node, and so on and so on. <coughs> and that's it. We just do that. So at the point, it will reach the threshold. We just don't know when, but we continue every 20 milliseconds to contact another set of nodes. Yes. So is that has the assumption that all every node has other nodes uh, up here? Yes. Uh, very good point. So yes, you know the difference between a pure recipient and this one is this one you know where is the node. I will have a lot of slides at the end of the fact that you know why this one. So you know, you know it's, it's IP address. So you know all the lists? All you know, the yeah. So in Ethereum, you know the list of uh, members of the committee. But uh, in, our, uh, in the current team, it actually has a, a limitation of the nodes, right? So the way it could work is at the beginning, when you're a member of a committee, you say, oh, actually, as an aggregator, I will speak at this address. And then you're not doing a gossiping connection, you're doing a direct TCP connection with the P2P. But it's a, a UDP message or a quick message. Actually, we try quick and with Okay. I will have a lot of slides on this, but you understood correctly. Uh, basically, you're doing, if I simplify, you're sending a UDP message. Zero knows the UDP address of this one and this one and this one. But all the UDP addresses are known and zero is sending a message directly to this one. It's a full direct communication. I will have more details on that. So if we do that, basically we will have a login <coughs> complexity at each step for sending login messages, and I will have some slides explaining the complexity. So the, actually, yeah, so just that. 
So the part is, okay, how do you know that you're not going to contact uh, all the nodes that is going to finish? Uh, there's some maths on that. So there's a test that I will present, and as well there's a proof that it actually works and that you need to send login message uh, to reach uh, the question. But it's just random stuff. And from a mathematical point of view, it's based on concentration inequality to be sure that you won't have a, a set of nodes that won't reach it. Okay, the question is, are we sure that uh, we won't have a subset of nodes that won't, uh, that will be very unlucky? And the question is to validate that node. Even if you're very unlucky, you still are. And everything is rather copy paste to just to say that it's complicated. It's not that complicated. <coughs> and the last level that I'm going to, the last thing that I'm going to present is this ranking and windowing. So the point is, we said um, we want things, to, we want to support very uh, different kind of nodes, so some nodes can be very slow. And we said that the BLS signature verification was very expensive. And we said as well that when you aggregate, you need to check that uh, it's correct. If not, you're just going to create a mess. So because of this, some nodes won't be able to catch up to the number of verifications that they receive. And they may check signatures that are not very interesting. Why? We've got some aggregate signatures that are much more complete because they receive it later. Okay? So because of it, we just have a scoring mechanism, which is how much are you improving of a signature that I have already. So we've got a score. Uh, when you have a score in the Byzantine context, you can have Byzantine nodes that will say, oh, here's a great signature, verify it. And actually, this signature is invalid, so you will have wasted five milliseconds of your verification time, which can be a lot. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. So the idea here is to have a ranking of the nodes and we want allows us to say, okay, at this point we should be contacted by those nodes. And we've got a window that seems more or less logic, so we look into this logic, into this window, and we take the best score inside this window. And if, okay, it seems that people are nice here, we increase the window size, and if people, if we see that some signatures are failing, we say, oh, someone is likely trying to, to play with us, so we reduce the size of it. And that's basically the main mechanism for handle. This fact that we're contacting the nodes directly, we've got a tree-based organization, so we, we are sure that we don't have any overlaps in our aggregation. We do verify our signatures. <coughs> and ranking plus, uh, plus code. Now, if we test this, we don't have any sponsorship for Amazon, but that's where we tested it. So we run it on 10 different regions in Amazon. Um, so some of them, you can see that it's quite fast. If you want to go from Frankfurt to Dublin, likely it's 12 milliseconds. But if you want to go from Frankfurt to, to Sydney, it's 282 milliseconds. And so we do this on 10 regions. We used uh, the small node from Amazon. So it's a one core and one gigabyte of memory. Uh, and we put we wanted 2,000 of them, and we put two nodes on each, uh, two under nodes on each Amazon node. Okay, so you basically have to process only this application of each node. So obviously, when you do that, you're fighting for the resources, because with a single core, for sure, that one verifies new signatures, one is verifying, and the other one is waiting for the others. So we, we consider that it's a more critical context than the real one but it has the advantage of being much cheaper to test than using 2,000 of uh, big Amazon nodes. And on this, we compare with uh, a case where we just send the signature to everybody. And we add basically what was expected, is a lot of data and uh, a lot of time because you start to lose messages and so on. Compared to Handle, uh, which reaches uh, for 4,000 nodes, uh, a full uh, signature, 99% actually, in uh, a little bit less than one second. Same for this one. In terms of data, we can see that we have 50 kilobytes of data exchange rather than 7 megabytes. Uh, that's fair enough, yeah. <coughs> and we tried on Amazon if some nodes are not responding. And so we compare the time 
to reach the agreement depending on how many nodes you have available. So if you try to reach 51% threshold while all the nodes are there, it's obviously quite fast, around 600 milliseconds. And it's getting a little bit slower if you're missing some nodes because basically at this point you want all the nodes to answer and you're around uh, 08 seconds. So we tried on simulations uh, more complicated things like attacks. So for example, this one is the case of you've got Byzantine nodes sending you uh, flat signatures while you're trying to try your project. We test signature with 90% of the nodes being Byzantine, so quite a lot. It's a logarithmic scale, so it's still around 10 seconds in this context, which is reasonably good. Of course, in this context, you just want to have a 10% threshold, so it's as well as this. So that's, that's in the paper. And now, the, the point that you are mentioning, the fact that it's a direct connection, that's uh, an interesting point. And it's really this idea of IP addresses, so if you have a gossiping network, uh, you have, do have IP addresses, and they're actually, you can get an access to them. Uh, but it's a little bit easier. You can pretend that uh, you're not known of the network and nobody knows that you're actually participating. It's a, it's a lie because it's quite easy to find who is actually on the gossiping network, but it's a little bit hidden, while here it's not hidden at all, it's, uh, it's directly visible. So, a lot of points on this, and for example, DOS. And there's a, a key point which adds a, a little bit of complexity in handle, but it's the fact that you're pushing the information and you don't do queries. Okay, so you don't have to answer uh, like a TCP query to something, you're just pushing things, uh, which means that uh, if we manage to have a single packet to go out, we're happy. So we think that because of this, uh, <coughs> an attack is still possible, clearly, but it requires some, uh, some hard work, I would say. Big question on anonymity. We know the contributors, we know their IP address, and we know their wallet, because they're stakers, so we can do the link IP address, wallet. That's bad. That's pretty bad. Uh, it's pretty bad, but don't forget that even in the gossiping network, you can actually guess who is who, because validators will move from one committee to another, so you just have to follow which IP address are in which committee, look at what are the wallets PK supposing to be participating, and after one hour or two, you'll be quite sure that you'll have your one-to-one mapping as well. So, uh, it's a real issue, but it's not purely specific. And we can actually, uh, we pushed a proposal to, uh, a few weeks ago to remove this link by adding a, a set in the middle, and this set allows us to say, okay, you're, we're known as a validator, but you can't know which validator we are. Okay. So it's basically on the ZKP playing with, uh, I'm a member of this set, here's the proof that I know one of the, public, of the private keys, but I won't tell you who I am, but I can't do this twice, so it's set. Okay. So that it works, it works as well in a way for gossiping, it's nearly independent. And then you've got the issues of this IP address stuff, and I don't think that's really miracle, but it's how to hide your IP address. The well-known solution is an unreal like protocol like Tor. Uh, the problem in this is, okay, it's going to be more expensive because Tor is adding, and your protocol is adding loops in the middle. So we can't really try it because uh, if we try to do this, we will break Tor. But we tried in the simulator to look at what it means if some nodes, 20% of the nodes are behind, have an extra latency of one second. And what we see is we're still a guide meek and we're still reasonably fast with 20% of nodes behind. That's a simulation. Conclusion. Uh, the idea really is if you can aggregate very quickly, you can get finality very quickly. Uh, in our opinion, it's uh, something with three different components and I would say well defined. There's one component in charge of doing the aggregation, there's one component in charge of having this cryptographic anonymity, we don't, use, we don't know your public key, and there's a network anonymity, which is, okay, you need an address system that doesn't exist today, or not exactly, but could be done, and it's 
anyway, uh, in any network system you've got this issue today. We've got a paper. And the pack that we use for the implementation is available. And what we use for the simulation is available as well. And time is up, so I'm just Take a question or two. You want to take a question? Yes. So, if an EC2 client was that you want to handle, on which part of the VPN do you think? Where are they actually at the station pool? Or? Uh, so, actually, it's funny because uh, like it's, uh, the Artemis client is going to implement it. Mm -hmm. And the way it's going to be implemented is by uh, putting it on a separate mode, a separate uh, process, and sending it. The things to aggregate. Uh, you will have one on the process per uh, validator. Even if uh, you know that we can share some characters. But by default, the idea is to have something well decentralized. So the fact that it can work with very small computers helps the decentralization. Uh, you don't need to have one big node that do the pre-aggregation of 1,000 signatures for you. Uh, so that's the okay. So that's the main thing that we target, even if you know that people will sometimes have to be fast with it. Yes? So I have two questions. The first is that with the crucial convergence, do you need to assume that the ID is around it? Say it again? With the crucial convergence, do you need to assume that the ID is around it? Uh, the ID, very good question. The IDs are not random, but we shuffle them. You need, need to assume that you need to shuffle them. Yeah. Exactly, we need to shuffle them. Uh, yeah. You have a protocol for that. Uh, good point as well, yes. Uh, we rely on uh, a shared source of randomness to do this. Which is, I haven't detailed this because it's not new in that era. We already have this. Uh, in the future work, is, we can prove that we don't depend too much on randomness, but we haven't done this part yet. Uh, because even if you, can, if you don't have randomness, it means that you can choose your position in the tree. Okay, and for example, you can say, oh, I don't like this guy there, so all the Byzantine nodes will go next to him and will refuse to participate in the aggregation. Okay, they will pretend to or whatever. Uh, however, if they do that, it means that they are not on another part of the network. So, there's a dependency on the analysis and the randomness. I'm not sure that in real life we depend so much on the randomness. Okay, so the second question, which is kind of more relevant to the protocol, but will affect your time, is this. so what, what uh, defense against rogue, uh, rogue keys are you using for the VLS application? So we, don't, we consider it a part of the application uh, that we'll have to, like we do in the Ethereum, we have to do a uh, proof of uh, possession. You assume the proof of possession, yeah, but it's not clear that all of this is going to be on the VLS chain. So it's finished all? Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's finished, that's what I've done.